Thank you to Michelle Levine. Every week of the campaign, she'll be identifying the two big issues of, of the week as sort of identified by the leaders, really, and then bringing them home to two crucial seats to see what, uh, what really matters. Andrew Bolt, what was the message Simon Cream was delivering fairly and squarely to Kevin Rudd? <laughs> Wasn't it wonderful to watch? What he was saying was, you're on notice. You play ball or you're out. Uh, you won't have any leadership position within the uh, team. And uh, I think that the fact is that there is nothing, absolutely nothing, in Kevin Rudd's DNA or in his past history or anything at all to indicate he is a team player. I don't and, think it'll work. And, Karen, that might be the view of the, a lot of people within the Labor yes, Party. Yes, I had that view put to me last night, too, by a Labor person, that, you know, if Kevin really wants a job on the front bench, he's going to have to pull his head in and, and actually campaign for Julia Gillard. Now, of course, they know he's not going to do that, so you could suggest that they might be setting setting up the situation whereby they can say after the election, well, look, he didn't play as a team, he didn't campaign for the Prime Minister, so we're going to renege on the promise to put him on the front bench. But on the face of it, he seems to be just campaigning as a, as a, as a marginal member would out in his electorate, but I guess underneath the water it's all going on. Yes, I mean he's still I, I think I said here a couple of weeks ago that he's doffed the martyr's weeds I don't think he has, I think he's put, on, put them on and added a couple of layers the, the, the Labor Party has been loyal to him um, Except for, uh, sorry. <laughs> except for taking his except job. For, well, <laughs> except for, we're, we're talking, uh, you know, uh, in, in the common era uh, <laughs> after he was dumped. The, uh, Gillard has said lovely things about him. When he was uh, criticised in a story uh, on the ABC, uh, there was a string of ministers uh, who called the journalist involved and defended Rudd. Um, Is this the national they were security being, one? They were being, uh, yes. uh, they were being uh, team players w with Rudd. Oh, because they would have been implicated if you accepted and the nature of the story. And, and that's why. Uh, well, well, occasionally I can finish. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> All right. And they expect that sort of team play in return. I mean, right. they, they could have led, let Rudd, uh, you know, uh, left him there swinging. Okay. Even if they might have, as you say, they, they might have been implicated themselves. Well, in the I story. haven't quite seen this team play. I've seen a series of leaks and counter leaks, which is absolutely extraordinary. Rudd leaking that he might be uh, considered by the, uh, for, the, for a UN job, which turns out to be a part-time three times a year <laughs> kind of thing, and other people, and leaking about deals being well, reneged on and then counter deals. How do, you know deals he leaked, uh, how do you know he leaked that? And, and I was going to make the point Come that when Julia, Gillard <laughs> launched the, <laughs> when Julia Gillard launched the Blanche Dalpigé book about Bob Hawke, she listed the characteristics of a good Prime Minister, and all the characteristics <laughs> she listed were all the criticisms they'd been making of Kevin Rudd. So I'm not sure about the... Precisely. 